<laughs> In the city of old Baghdad, there lived a certain merchant. His name was Abu Qasem. Now this guy, there was nothing too special about him. He wasn't particularly tall, wasn't short, wasn't fat, wasn't thin, wasn't handsome, wasn't particularly ugly either. He was kind of an everyman. He was kind of like any of us. Abu Qasem. But there were two things that set this man apart. Two things that you need to know. They're kind of connected. Number one, Abu Qasem was the biggest miser Baghdad had ever seen. He loved money, but he didn't just love what money could do, the acquisition of things, the freedoms it could be providing. He just loved the acquisition of money itself. Oh God, he was greedy. This is the first thing. Abu Qasem was a notorious miser. Thing is, he was rich and liked to hide the fact. So, he would go around Baghdad wearing an old faded turban, a tatty tunic, and on his feet, now this is the second thing that made Abu Qasem famous, was a pair of slippers. Ye gods, they were disgusting. They had passed through the hands of every cobbler in Baghdad. Hark, I have a prop. These are they, the very slippers drawn from the myth world here in our present reality. Passed through the hands of every cobbler in Baghdad so that no part of them was the same as the original. They were disgusting. They would turn up the nose of any beggar that passed. They would make camels bray and buck in the street. They were filth. In fact, they had become a byword on the tongues of the populace. If ever anyone wanted to express something preposterous, they would say, you, sir, are ridiculous but not as ridiculous as Abu Qasem's slippers. In fact, the things had become a symbol of Abu Qasem's unpalatable greed, avarice, penny-pinching ways. So, they were his public persona. Now, Abu Qasem was a very shrewd merchant. And when he went wandering through the bazaar in Baghdad, biggest bazaar in the world at this time, mind you, in fact, in many ways, it was the world. The place where people present their public face, where careers are made and broken, things bought and sold, great mounds of spices, wonderful things from across the world. And through this marketplace would trot Abu Qasem's slippers going this way and that. People didn't notice Abu Qasem, but they did notice the slippers coming through the marketplace. And Abu Qasem was on the hunt for the deal. Now, one day, Abu Qasem was walking along as he normally did, and he came across another merchant, this time a glass merchant, selling crystal, little Crystal bottles, beautiful things, tiny things. Now, this merchant was bankrupt, down on his luck, and he was selling his whole consignment of tiny little glass bottles for an absolute bargain. Well, Abu Qasem was in the right place at the right time. He bought 1,000 of these tiny little glass bottles for an absolute song. Now, a few days later, Abu Qasem clapped the deal because he came across another merchant, this time a perfume seller selling a whole great big vat of attar of roses. Very nice perfume. Now, this merchant was also down on his luck, also bankrupt. Abu Qasem was in just the right place at just the right time. He bought the whole vat of rose-scented perfume for an absolute song. Who cares, you may say. Well, it was a combination of these two purchases that added up to an absolute stroke of business genius. Because what he was going to do is this. He was going to take the attar of roses and he was going to put the attar of roses in the little crystal bottles, put little labels on them, tie a little bow, and he would sell them for an absolute fortune. The markup on that is going to be something quite impressive. And this deal was much discussed in the bazaar. Abu Qasem, very, very, very clever man, very shrewd businessman. It was deals like this that made his fortune. Now, in Baghdad, at the time, there was a certain cluster. If you uh, had a particular stroke of good fortune like this, 
You would celebrate in the usual way, which is to uh, hold a bit of a supper party for some of your close friends, some of your associates, where you would, you know, talk about things. Problem was, Abacus said, A, didn't really have very many friends, and B, he wasn't going to spend his hard-earned money on someone else. No, he was going to do something for himself. So, he visited a place where he had not been for quite some time. The bathhouse. In he went to take his bath, where he met an old business acquaintance of his. I won't say friend, because he didn't have many, but a business acquaintance. Met him in the antechamber before going in to take their bath. A few gentlemen, two merchants. Abu Qasem, said this merchant. Still wearing those old slippers, I see. Abu Qasem looked down and he was indeed still wearing his old slippers, as he wore them every single day. Come on, old boy, the merchant said. You really should know better than that. People are beginning to talk. Shrewd businessman like yourself, it's your public face, man. Buy a new pair, I implore you. Well, I would say I'm just taking the wretched things off and examining them, and well, they really were rotten, but you see, he was very attached to these slippers. He didn't want to let them go, and well, he said, they're not so warm that I cannot wear them. Detachment. So, undressed as they were, the two men went in to take there. But at this moment, the Kadi of Baghdad arrived and entered the bathhouse to take his bath. Ooh, Kadi of Baghdad, very important man, very important man. The most important man in the whole city. Kadi's like a judge, supreme judge of spiritual and legal matters, second only in authority to the Caliph himself. The Kadi of entered the bathhouse, took off his slippers, put them in the antechamber. Meanwhile, Abu Qasem finished his bath. He left the bathhouse, but where were his slippers? His slippers were gone. He couldn't find them, couldn't find them anywhere. Absolutely vanished. But, ooh, what's this? In their place, or almost in their place, were a fantastic, beautiful, brand new pair of slippers. These things were amazing, embroidered in gold, kind of um, little pom-pom on them, really lovely pair of slippers. Well, 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 what's this? Thought Abu Qasem to himself. My slippers have gone missing, and these brand new, luxurious pair, in their place. Almost in their place. Well, Abu Qasem surmised thus. My friend, my business acquaintance, has bought me these slippers because he felt sorry for me with my old slippers and he wants to, uh, you know, ingratiate himself with a slightly more successful businessman. That's how Abu Qasem reasoned. Thus, with conscience clear, he left the bathhouse with his brand spanking new pair of slippers. Meanwhile, the Kadi of Baghdad finished his bath. He entered the antechamber where the slippers were kept, but what is this? His slippers were missing. He sent his slaves high and low. They searched the whole bathhouse, but the caddies' slippers were nowhere. Button, all things, which of course everybody recognised, were the slippers of Abu Qasem. Well, the judge, the caddy, was furious. He had very little patience, this man. So, the bailiffs of the court were sent round to Abu Qasem's house, and the bailiff found on Abu Qasem's feet the offending footwear. He was caught red-footed, and he was hauled before the courts, and dragged before the caddy himself to explain himself. I thought they were a present, Your Honour, and everyone laughed and pointed at him and called him a liar, and he was given a huge fine, because, of course, no matter how he tried to hide the fact, everyone knew how rich Abu Qasem was. And Abu Qasem was sent home, but at least he was reunited with his poor old slippers. Well, Abu Qasem hated to lose money. He was in quite a fit of temper. And he said to his slippers, I'm going to get rid of you. I'm going to get rid of you, you bloody things. I'll see no more of you. And with that, he threw the slippers out of the window. You see, with the fine he had got from the court, 
he had exactly wiped out the projected profit from the little bottles of perfume he was going to sell. Remember those? So he threw the slippers out the window and they went plop into the river, into the Tigris, floating muddily past his house. Now, Abu Ghassan had no time to lose, so he set about placing the bottles in little rows, filling the attar of roses inside them, writing the labels, tying on the little bows, and he was stacking up the crystal bottles. 998, 999, 1,000. There. That was three days later. Meanwhile, at dawn, on the fourth day, some fishermen were fishing on the river, looking for a nice big fish. They cast their nets into the river, they heaved the nets, and what did they find? Something. Something big. This was a big fish. This was a this, this could be a crocodile, this could be some, some treasure, this could be a lamp filled with a genie that will grant all their wishes. There was something good in this net for sure. And they hauled the net into the boat, and what did they find? A rotten old pair of slippers. A rotten old pair of fucking slippers that had torn a hole in their fishing net. These are poor men, poor fishermen, they don't have time to be mending nets torn by slippers. Well, in a rage, the fishermen threw the old pieces of footwear and they went sailing through the air, through the nearest open window, which of course just happened to be Abu Ghassem's. Now, meanwhile, Abu Ghassem is in his living room. He had just put the thousandth bottle on top. When smash! The muddy shoes came sailing through the window, smashed the fucking bottles everywhere. There's glass on the walls, shit, mud, perfume, his living room is ruined, and all the profit, all the profit from the bottles is gone! What's this? My fucking slippers! They've come back! You see, he was quantumly entangled with these slippers. He couldn't escape them that easily. Here they were. What was he going to do with them? What was he going to do with them? Right, okay. I've got to get rid of these things. I've got to get rid of these things. I'm going to bury them. I'm going to bury the slippers. So, he waited till nightfall, and then he got a spade. And he took his slippers, and he wrapped them in silk, uh, very lovingly, because he was very attached to the things. He loved the slippers. And he went out into his garden, quite a big garden, he was a rich man, and he dug a hole. And he placed the slippers quite ceremoniously into the hole, covered it over, and they were gone, buried in the ground.